During Griffin's second year, his fine motor skills really developed and became quite, I think, quite extraordinary for a kid of his age. I gave Griffin specific jobs, Montessori term, jobs. I gave him specific toys and tasks to do um, each week because I wanted to keep him stimulated. And so things like posting toothpicks into little bottles and, and pouring and, and things which really helped him to develop specific skills, I was able to learn from Montessori. We kept to the Institute's program and we continued with osteopathy and some of the allergy work and other things that we'd been doing and um, it was really fantastic because with the Institute's program we were able to give the girls very specific jobs that they could do and in fact some of their friends helped and would come over to the house and make books for Griffin with his reading. Between the ages of two and three we watched Griffin come into his own physically. He just became so strong and independent and it was really lovely for the girls to know that they had really helped him to get there. All the work that we'd done crawling around on the floor with him and up and down our driveway with their friends after school had helped and so you know how wonderful for them to have been a part of that. Griffin also became quite conversational in his own way which was just gorgeous. Griff, ah. do you know that you're going to be three in two sleeps? Do you want to turn three? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to have a party? Yeah. Are you excited about it? Yeah. 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 I think you are. So Griffin at three and a half is just such a healthy, strong boy. He's hardly ever sick. He's really his speech is starting to come along now. We're still working on it. We still have a program, and he's doing running every day, and he's doing walking every day, and we've got him on a maths program now, which is, as I said, incredibly simple. Here we go. Yeah. Three plus six equals nine. Okay, cool. You want some more? Yeah. Great. It's all, I suppose, probably leading towards homeschooling. We'll see. But um, we just keep shooting for the stars. And he just keeps impressing us. You know, there's some things that we obviously need to keep working on. And I run the physical program with Griffin. And we get down to the park, if not every day, every second day. And uh, he loves it. You know, it's our time together. but. He loves the physical challenges that I, that I give him and they're all to um, make him better, you know, and it's kind of like he knows that this is the game. We work out, we run around, we make his body stronger, makes his brain better, it makes his coordination, his function, and since we started the physical program, really got into it, uh, his speech has come along incredibly well. So one thing will help another thing. There is a direct correlation between what you're doing and the results that you will see. Locked. Bike. 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 Yeah, well done. He's just a, a thoroughly gorgeous person. When I came to write this book, Griffin was about two and a half. I'd been put in contact with a family in Israel whose little boy was six months with Down syndrome. And I felt a real connection with this family and so I decided to actually write as if I was sitting across the table from this couple. And so it is written in a very personal way. I've, I've chosen to write it as if I'm speaking very much to you and as if you're sitting in my living room, which we are right now. <laughs> Every family is different. You can't, we've taken a smorgasbord approach with Griffin. We've done everything I could find, partly because that's just the way I am. You have to just do what you feel is right for you. You have to do as much as you can or as little as you can, or even if you find one thing in my book that you 
you think you might find useful and try it and if it works great maybe try another one I think that our approach has been what worked for us all I want to do is inspire families of children with special needs to keep their expectations absolutely as high as can be and to give children as much opportunity as possible don't assume that they can't do anything assume that they can and let them try and that's really where they learn is in the trying my name is Ty Bellner. The reason to stay healthy is when you exercise so much and when you do yoga, it gives you heaps of muscles and heaps of lung capacity and core strength. I like tennis because I'm doing very, very well at tennis mm -hmm. and my coach, Simon, says I'm doing very, very well. With people with Down syndrome, they can do anything and they can keep their dream alive like they can swim, they can run, they can do anything they want to do. And as far as families of children that are not um, facing any sort of challenges, there is just so much more that we can do as parents than we know about. I don't know why, I don't know why these things aren't mainstream, I don't know why teaching a child to read is not part of what we all do now, knowing just how simple it is. And having spoken also to parents of children who are now adults who went through this as little ones and the sort of excellence that they have academically, I mean, this is extraordinary wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Kristen, for this fantastic book, and I'm going to recommend it to all the parents that come to my clinic. Good job. I'd be very happy to recommend this book to any of my patients and also any of our global community. Who do I think can benefit from reading this book? Look, I am recommending this book to every parent that I see in my private practice. Every patient who has children, whether they have a neurological condition, whether they have a physiological condition, whether they have an emotional condition, or whether they're well. I think that this book is a must read for all parents.